Hey folks, and welcome to Art Notes, a podcast where myself, Jonathan Liddell, has a chat or maybe interviews some other creatives and entrepreneurs. And today I'm joined by my dearest pal, Matt Barron, a fellow artist, incredible oil painter, great guy to know. Baron, what are you working on? A picture. Um, so this stemmed from a photo shoot I was doing um, and I just liked the way it looks, the light and the hair and things like that. So it's an odd pose and it's an odd uh, composition, mm. but I quite liked it because you had the blue and the hairband and then the red on the sheet. And it was kind of a, it was just a nice kind of composition really. I love so it actually. Explore. So this is an exploration painting rather than anything else. It's not a commission or anything. Mm -hmm. Just one of my projects. Love it. So what what is it? Is it just like various textures and stuff? What what am I looking at here? I'm kinda well, that's a good sign. Um so this is a woman lying down that's the back. It's the hair band. Oh, I, I, I see it now. So it's quite yep. a um yep. it's not exactly a nude but it kind of is. No, yeah, yeah, but you're dealing with various Social. textures, you're dealing with skin, you're dealing with composition, obviously. Oh, yeah, I love it. There's a lot of things in there that I wanted to practice on, like uh -huh. the hair, the skin, um, yep. cloth and all that kind of stuff. And this hairband I found very interesting. So mm -hmm. when I find something like that, quite interesting, and I think, well, that'd be interesting to paint. So I just have to have a go yep. and see how it turns out. Which is one of the best ways I find of exploring your own art. Well, it's quite, it's actually quite funny, Baron. I, I was actually going to ask you about just studies and, um, you, you know, find well, I'm forever attempting to incorporate more studies into my kind of daily practice, <laughs> which definitely needs to happen more often. But it is so powerful. I, I remember one of the best pieces of advice my art, secondary art teacher back when I was. 14 or something he was like just draw every day and you kind of hear it and you're just like yeah yeah that's i'll, I'll do that and 10 20 years later you're just like yeah i don't really do that every day but actually that's how to go about it find something interesting and then incorporate it into your day every day yeah mm. that was one of the uh, warnings that one of our lecturers at college gave me when i first applied for fine art said you know one of the things that you'll find is that you do something repetitive all the time when you're doing fine art whereas right. other disciplines don't do that as much mm -hmm. um and at first that was a bit daunting because i thought oh, doing the same thing every day i don't know about that but it's you find something interesting to do every day you're not just doing a don't painting a shoe all the time or a mm -hmm. book or whatever you're not doing still lifes all the time you're doing what you want to do yeah yeah I don't tell you that um, that's quite funny actually. I was listening to the SVS Learn guys. They've they've got a podcast on illustration, and they talk about the worst assignments that uh, lecturers would give their students, and ones that they've given that they were like, "Oh, I really wish I hadn't they given that." But a lot of it, it really is, you know, you, you can still you can still practice and find enjoyment in what you're doing within those limitations. So I don't really think that doing a self portrait every 10 minutes is, I mean, it would just drive you nuts, but there is certainly something you can find from, yeah, picking, picking a study and then thinking about composition, thinking about um, values, light and color, all that kind of jazz, textures, how different textures respond to the same light source where some actually would just absorb it, where some are really reflective. Um, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so. College, um, with just quickly. With, yeah, go. Uh, I was doing self portraits a lot just because it was a easy, handy model that was right there in front of me because I wanted to get better at portraiture. So I thought, well, I'm right here. I'll just look at a mirror every day. When mm. I, as soon as I started to get bored with it, I thought, mm. oh, I need to change things up. Mm. So I'd start painting on every different material I could find. The textile department hated me because um, I was always stealing a load of calico and, um, and hessian and all that kind of stuff to paint on. But it was really fun. And it's a good way of, of trying out paint and seeing it, what mm. you can do. Mm. So. Oh, I love that. No, definitely. Yeah. Use what's available, test it out, find a way that you like to work, and then hone that process so that you can actually build on it. Mm. Yeah, I'm definitely still figuring that one out. If, if I don't, um, if, if I kind of go for a window without 
painting, I honestly feel like I, I just forget so much. It's almost like the muscle memory just taps out, which is ridiculous, seeing as I've been doing it for years. But it's, I've, I think it's, uh, it's as much fear as a blank canvas as it is kind of like, how do I do this again? Um, so definitely doing it constantly is... Um, is key that would <laughs> definitely be something i i really want to hone in on um someone i'm working on just now uh i'll just see if i can pull it up um there we yeah what are you uh, yeah so um is that coming up yeah looks Excellent. good yeah i really oh, i thought right. is it look all right honestly i thought i was finished this and then I kind of, I was looking at snow and a good friend of mine, he's always skiing and he was like, you'll actually find that the, the snow gets a lot kind of darker and bluer where the light's not getting into it. Um, and I was like, right, so I'm, I'm, I really wanted to kind of up the contrast a little bit, make the shadows a bit darker, really try and draw attention to the face. I wasn't sure if it was a bit too desaturated. So trying to like bump up the reds and play the, I mean, it's the, the stereotype of playing warms well not stereotype it's, it's a tool of playing warms off of cools about orange and blue is uh, uh we both know a movie which uh, leaned far too heavily on the blue and the blue and orange contrast but it works so yeah but i've, I've to be honest my favorite bit of this whole thing is sort of the bags and the so anyway i am inspired by the um uh, carry you by novo amor very very chilled out um very very chilled out band so yeah, there is there's still just a few bits i want to get right i've got the hair blowing this way i need to have the snow actually following the same i think i want some more kind of highlights and um can i ask yeah. do you think please yeah go ahead a very orange light mm -hmm. source mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes you think there will be any of that in the snow oh 100 percent. i actually um i think actually what i should have done no no but maybe it's not not as obvious enough so you've got you've got a light source the orange light source here which is then kind of shooting off and there will be rays which are not as strong uh oh how does that work again i was just trying to remember what is it sunset is it's like really oh i need to do my homework on that one you might get a bit of an orange kind of rim light maybe so yeah but definitely where the snow is more reflective like maybe down here there needs to be more orange being picked up maybe in the hair as well so you've got like your, your blue your blue and kind of pinky orangey fill light coming from the sky which will be filling this which is why my shadows are like darker and bluer yeah. and then the orange light here i need yeah you're i think you're right actually maybe i do need to try and figure out where see there's just there's still work to do <laughs> well yeah like but i mean you've done a wonderful job of the sky and the snowflakes falling Mm. You made it look like there's snowflakes falling rather than just white dots everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is it. It's like, you know, all snowflakes are unique and different shapes and different sizes. And how heavy is it snowing? And what's the direction of the <laughs> of the wind? And, you know, how much is there? Is there a breeze? So anyway, mm. I'll take this back down. But that's mm. I, I want to have this finished by today so that I can get it up on the shop. Um yeah, so inspired by the Novo Amor song, um, and a real nod to kind of um, yeah all the all the kind of women that have been carrying little ones and everybody's uh, stuff in this mad time. That's what I wanted to kind of hint at. So, um, so yeah, thanks. Yeah, we'll um, yeah we'll see how we go. Uh, I will just so Baron, what are we talking about today? What um. What were you thinking? Yeah, like what we wish we'd known or learned or something. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to well, start? Oh, well, yeah, I, I guess, um, yeah, I definitely wanted to talk on what I wish I'd known sooner, especially, flipping out, especially when I was at uni, but we can go back further than that. Um, I do want to look at some inspirational artists as, as, as well that have kind of, inspired me which which does actually tie in i think yeah tell you what um what i wish i'd known <laughs> earlier on um especially at uni get a bank of artists practicing um and and long gone um what's the correct terminology for that contemporary and you can tell i studied art history historic 
Continue. That's fine. That'll be grand. Yeah. yeah um, I'm sure somebody will correct us in the comments. Um, oh. But certainly, like, finding artists that I really resonated with and I could learn from early on would have seriously changed my game much earlier on. I'm going to have to grab um, Tim Von Ruden, who uh, shout out to you, Tim. Um, I I just adore his his work. He's a He's yeah, like, you never talk about Timberland. <laughs> I just love him. He's fantastic. Um, I've, I now have a few of his digital works, but more importantly, or I imagine more importantly to him, his, um, his graphite works are just stunning. I, lo- I just love his graphite works, which is what, he's, um, uh, it's what he does full time, essentially, now. He, um, so that was his first sketchbook, his second sketchbook. He, he really, his, his whole brand became um, graphite and gold. And it's just, I mean, it's like, I mean, modern day Muka doesn't even do him justice. I don't think I, I just, I love his work. I just think they're brilliant. Um, I, uh, anyway, so, so Tim Von Ruden, he's, he's big for me purely because, um, weirdly uh, enough, he, he was one of the first digital painters that I came across who was producing content on YouTube. And, um, and he, uh, he, he had free content up there, which was just so easy to follow on it. And it really opened up my eyes um, to, I love this piece. The, um, yeah, anyway. Uh, so yeah, he, he really opened up my eyes to um, uh, painting digitally and actually then focusing on how do I learn color and he was referencing um, James Gurney who's just a master um, who I will oh, I thought I had this sitting here but I have it um, bum, 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 bum. oh there we go sorry folks so color and light color and light this uh, he, he did a lot of the Dinotopia stuff this um, this was like the painting guide that I wish I'd had at uni. Be like, you know, before YouTube and all that jazz, if I'd known this book existed, um, wow. Like, there's just so much on how different lighting, in fact, I'm going to reread this, um, uh, affects different setups. Um, so, sorry, I'm just trying to find a, a good example. Um, yeah, so, like, there you go. Um, like edge lighting, like which yeah. which is commonly referred to as like rim, like rim light. How how the light is then wrapping round like the corner of a, a surface. I'm just trying to so like yeah, you could essentially say oh, okay. this patch of light is like that kind of rim light, which then wraps back over, opposed to illuminating the whole surface. But, yeah. um, I just love this stuff. Like I I I said to you before, like <laughs> I've really fallen back in love with art purely because of like light. I I love studying how light affects different surfaces and what you can do with that. So, um, uh, and, you know, I'm always good mm. at what you're doing, isn't it? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. So, and even back to the days with, um, so again, like when we met like 10 years ago, I've got to, I've got to share this. There's, there's two guys who, um, oh, Baron, I'm, I'm just going to rant for a second because I just love this stuff so much. Um, John Howe, who did some of the early um, yeah, Lord, Lord of the Rings. My uh, goodness. He had this when we were like 17. You said it. Look at this legend. Look at him. Where's the... There it is. Oh, good. What an absolute hero. Um, anyways, that's him. But his, his pencil work before he then uh, did washes in watercolour. Um, I just... I mean, he's, he is the... Oh, wow, I mean, look at this. Um, look at these. They're just stunning. Um, taking, a, taking a study of like a skull and then turning it into a rock face because he thought it found it interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just it's gorgeous. So, yeah, so John Howe, um, Tim Von Ruden, and um, going back to lighting, this book, The Dam Keeper by Robert Kondo and Dice Tusami. Oh, I remember you saying. Dude, the yeah. lighting in these are just, just gorgeous. Um, really sad I've, story, isn't it? 
in the book. It's, well. Yeah, it's a, it's a sad, it's, it's a kind of sad story to begin with because, and actually they, they put up a, a, a video of it not that long ago, I think, um, that was just available for a certain amount of time. I need to get this camera right. Um, so it's, it's, it's like a kind of children's illustration style, but it deals with some like heavy, heavier topics of like kind of bullying and then making pals and surviving through all that and self-worth, all that kind of stuff. It's magic. Um, so yeah, last one. Um, Cedric, in fact, I might actually just screen share this, but uh, coming back to like a more um, like industry um, artist working in industry for like concept art, the the Dishonored um, video game title, man, um, uh, Cedric um, Pereverne, Pereverne, I think that's his name. His character works. I mean, dude, these are amazing. I I absolutely love these. They're just so like sculptural, and again, like so, you know, like from a You're kind of painting. Them, I oh, I lo- honestly, yeah. I I bought this book a few years back, and I just love it. Like I, I honestly love it. Is the way he approaches. I mean, look at his portraits, man. They're just so striking. Um, so I really, yeah, exactly. Um, I'll um I'll quickly. Very very quickly, just because I appreciate the light is uh, is bouncing off of off of that. Um, but I'll just pull up his uh, I'll just pull up his Instagram just so you can see what I'm really talking about. Um, dum 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 dum. There we go, and there we go. Is that coming through? Yep. Yep. Looking good. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Just so clever. I love it. Anyway, so that's when I really started to fall back in love with art again was was when I found artists that A, inspired me because I aesthetically looked at their work and went, wow, I want to paint like that. But then B, they were saying, hey, by the way, we can kind of show you tips and tricks as to what we're doing and how we're achieving it. I mean, it took me to get to my master's before I looked at, um, before I looked at digital painting, uh, before, you know, before I was thinking about doing any of the book stuff, that's where all my kind of illustration really kicked off was because I'd I'd fallen in love with uh, Tim von Ruden's pencil work, but then learning from his digital painting. That's when I was like, it's ridiculous that I'm having to learn light and color from a digital standpoint, when there have been these masters, like the old masters, um, uh, I mean, they, they just, they really knew what they were doing. Um, yeah, anyway, I could harp on about this. Who, who inspires you? That, that was one thing you wish you'd had. Mm. Anything else that you wish you'd learned before? Oh, but, um, yeah, I think there's, my attitude to, I mean, maybe this is just because we're getting older, ish um but my certainly my my approach to learning uh and maybe it was due to being a bit misguided or or not knowing what i wanted but i just couldn't hone in on anything and then when there was something like uh, oh look you can learn this thing i i think i really did have this attitude of oh yeah like that's that's fine but i don't need it or yeah yeah i've i've grasped that thanks so I'll, I'll maybe dabble in it a wee bit but like i'm i'm producing work that's fine and, and i know what i'm doing opposed to actually sitting back and thinking mate you, you don't know jack like these guys are working in industry their work is gorgeous and you've got some crappy doodles that you're pumping out to get finished while you're not really sure what you're doing that I think really changing my attitude to one of a, like, yeah, your work's cool and but mine's fine to being like, actually, I'm going to take a back seat. I'm going to accept the fact that I need to go back over my fundamentals. Like my drawing skills need improved. My um, composition needs improved. My understanding of how light and color works and atmosphere and value flipping it, but even just values like having the darkest darks be a big jump from your lightest lights within a painting. If you have a really nice gradient between light and dark within the whole whole spectrum of light and dark in a painting, 
it's boring. Like it's it's actually not compelling. But if you just use this yeah. little section of Darkest Dark and then like to, I'll put like a little thing up so that people know what the heck I'm talking about. Um, know. <laughs> you know what you're talking about, but like just values being, you know, and values, I should maybe explain what I mean by that. It's kind of a term used to just explain light and dark, the lightest lights, the darkest darks, um, opposed to, I always understood it as tone. Um, but no, it's values. It's like the lightest light to the darkest dark, that gradient. Um, and how, if, if you just, you, you pick a, a, like a little window of that and then apply it, then it, your images are, so, oh, this is like Nathan Fawkes. Nathan Fawkes, what a legend. Worked on Prince of Egypt, um, Spirit, the, the stallion. Yeah, you were gonna bring him up. Oh, he's just a legend. This guy is, um, I mean, he, Flipping that man, his story as well is is wild, and in, in that he, um, uh, I mean, he said a few health scares. The guy wears an eye patch now, and yet he, you know, he used to work for um, uh, Disney and Pixar at the same time. Um, anyway, so I'm rambling now. Um, what I wish I'd known. Now I wish I'd actually, yeah, now I'm rambling. Um, I wish I had early, much early on thought. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to choose to learn and actually accept that and get on with it opposed to thinking or being arrogant enough to be like, yeah, my work's grand. And then acting on that, um, that behavior. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. See, this is, this is interesting because you and I both needed to learn certain things Probably the same things actually. Once we got out of uni and wanted to pursue something, we didn't know back then that we'd need to learn them. Mm. I had no oh. idea that I'd need to learn about the marketing and <laughs> the the other whole other aspect, the business side of mm -hmm. art. I had mm -hmm. no idea really. I thought, well, I'll just kind of handle it. Mm -hmm. I really just mm -hmm. want to make art right now, and it's a good attitude to have when you're learning fine art when you're learning any kind of discipline really is you really want to focus and learn that discipline it's one of the problems though i find with academia mm. and you probably have it as well is that you are very very focused on the your subject it's not a good way to build a career <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the expert you want to be the best that you can be at whatever it is you're doing at the time which is a great thing mm. But then afterwards, you come out and you think, this information is useless. Yep. It's not going to make me any money on its own. Yep. Because no one's going to sell your work for you unless you get really lucky and get a gallery straight away. Or you get a publisher sort of that comes up to you and says, make me a book. You're not going to get that in real life. No. Yeah. And then no one is going to sell your product like you are. Yeah. You're, you're the only one who's going to know it inside out enough, know its value to then get out there and publish it no matter how confident or not you feel about any of that it's mm -hmm. it's a necessity so you either pay somebody else to do it for you or you suddenly get into the big bad world and think oh my goodness i didn't learn any of this at uni why were we not being told that so i mean when we were coming you know coming up social media wasn't even talked about I was, at, I was at our college. There was no tutors talking about the importance of social media. There was no tutors talking about the importance of maybe do a business not, course. Gosh. University. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. We just, we just didn't time. know. <laughs> you know, I, I loved it, and I'm a mm. big, big fan of it. And I would encourage anybody to study what you want to study there mm. at certain mm. places. If you find a good place that's right for you, yeah, do it. Ignore that you won't ever pay that up. But mm. you have to keep in mind that after you finish studying, mm. you keep on learning just a different field. You never stop the learning. Good um, point. And the certain thing, I mean, even in, they try and teach you how to find information for yourself, which is a huge thing. It's a very good skill to have. Certainly. Um, but they don't teach you what you should be learning mm. for this kind mm. of career thing. As I very said, much so. I didn't know that I needed to know these things. Yeah. You know? mm. At the beginning, first two years or three years of university, I was just finding out what my art practice was, what my what methods I liked, what what kind of 
colors and brushwork and, and styles I wanted to focus on the artists I wanted to mm. use and, and rely on for that. Then you've got artists you want to look at for how they present their work and how they sell their work and how they do all the ad side of things. Look to those artists while you can. Mm. That's what I would say anyway. Um, because totally agree. It's such, it's a crazy gig, isn't it? It's like you, you, you almost can't within the, certainly within this field, unless you're super switched on, you've just started uni, you, you, you're paying attention to the social media stuff, or you, you know, your target audience straight away, you're creating artwork within the, I mean, like graphic, graphic designers, totally different. They're going there to learn a skill, to get a job, to, to sort themselves out. I wish I'd had that mentality when I was at uni. Um, it, anim, animation, same deal. These are the tools I need to learn. Um, these are the artists that inspire me. I've got too much work to to do so that anything, all my other priorities are, are skated around that because I need to get a job in industry. Like good friends of mine that I was at uni with, um, Natalie Law, who I worked with, I'm sure she's working in, uh, I know Vicky's working in, are they both working in Ireland now? Anyway, like, they worked they were always working super hard but with and i think even they said we got out of uni we had all these skills but we didn't know how to market it mm-hmm. or there were still things that we needed to do even in four years you might not be able to attain everything you need to suddenly be sorted and have a you know have a cushy job and be and especially now that the, the market is just so saturated which i guess just comes back to you know do what you can do have an attitude of I'm going to learn this, but also have an attitude of looking around to see how other people are being successful in that current climate. Um, yeah. I mean, I say I'm you I'm still want to think about that while you're at uni. That you don't always want to think about, you know, what am I going to do after this? What job am I going to have after this? Mm. Because for the most part, I was always thinking to myself, well, it's probably never going to happen. Probably not going to be able to paint full time. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to enjoy it while I can. Mm. Um, which That's is an interesting one. It's a good attitude, really. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you stick your head in the sand almost with a with an art degree. Some people, and some people will think, well, maybe I'll just teach it. And yeah, you know, both know that that's not always the solution. No, no, it's a great thing to do. It's a noble thing. It's great, mm-hmm. but it doesn't always work out for you. I I, I think that's just it. You 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 need well you, you do what you can do with the information you do the best that you can do with the information that you have at the time for sure but if the information you have at the time is i'm just going to enjoy this because this is a fleeting thing it <laughs> it's a double edged sword because you might enjoy it but then you may struggle to utilize it to it, to the the best of your and the environment's ability um I I said before I've I've learned I learned so much from essentially being at my lowest um working in an environment I didn't want to work in to then be like okay this is not an ideal environment but if I have this art practice how can I utilize the environment I'm in to get it to people who might be interested um you know like this piece that I'm working on just now I've got people that I was I bumped into through the bar who are like let me know when this piece is available to buy which is amazing. I would never have been in contact with those people if I hadn't been at my lowest. Um, but it is that thing of, uh, okay, constantly checking in with yourself and being like, am I loving what I'm doing? Yes or no. How can I utilize to the best of my ability? How am I staying sane? Um, am I, you know, like sleep, food, exercise, all that madness, all of it. It's a holistic, you know, it's a holistic practice, this art gig. Um, and it all feeds in and it takes so much and you invest so much time, energy and money. And it's like, is the payoff worth it? Um, sometimes it does not feel that way. And then other times, I mean, honestly, man, like I've, I know I've said it before, but the, some of the reviews that I've like messages that I've got from this book, um, like both in private and, and public, uh, I've been amazing. Like, I mean, like genuinely I've been, I have honestly been humbled by, people 
contacting me saying this book arrived just when I needed it to. It was the met, and these are adults. These aren't even kids. They, like like or kid um kids or parents on their behalf. It was like I had an adult contact me saying this book arrived in the post just when I needed it to. The message was everything I needed to hear. I'm going through hell. This has been an inspiration to get up off you know off of my bad situation and get going. And on the other side of it, I've had parents saying to me this book my, my kid loves it they're asking when book two is coming out um arrived just at the right time grandma was around we're loving it that's for me it's like I've had a that's a great payoff reviews by the way people i've shown that book to they've really liked it i really um, appreciate it man i really really yeah. do especially I'd at this kind of early stage. Like people wanted to borrow it <laughs> it's my send oh, them to oh, amazon oh, they can get it there <laughs> oh, exactly you yeah. buy it Mm. But it's yeah it's but difficult that doesn't put food on the table no. how does food get on the table well that's the that's the main thing that i mean at the moment obviously you and i are working very mm. close to mm. what we would want to be doing mm. and all the way through i thought to myself i want to be a painter mm. i want to i want to I just want to paint. If all, if I could do it, if I had my way, and it's still that today. If I had my way, all I would do is paint all day, and make money mm. off of that. To make money off of that, I have to paint things that I never thought I would. Never in my life would I thought I'd be painting kittens and dogs and dead dogs. And they're not dead in the picture, them. Um, for any of you viewers, I get a lot of that. Like, what, no, what are you I, painting? It's like, why would someone want me to do that? Um, and it's very rewarding in a way I never thought it would be. Mm. You know, mm. I had to learn how to paint animals, which I never thought I'd be doing, mm. to make money, any kind of funding out of it. Mm. But it's still painting and it still allows me to do other things. And yeah. Still practicing and your skill, yeah. Still practicing my mm. skill, still mm -hmm. honing that, still getting better at that. Mm. It's just a different, yeah. The subject matter is different, yeah. It's, yeah. I guess it, that's it, isn't it? It's like if you could tell your younger self, by the way, there are going to be some super hard times, and when you're looking at other people who have got solid jobs, even. I mean, and to be fair, we, we know people who had solid jobs who are now like clawing back. But, you know, it's, I, I mean, I've, I struggle with this a lot because you, there, there are certain career choices where I look back and I was like, in the short term, it would have been, I mean, that would have been hard work in itself just to get in. I mean, I've, I looked at the military numerous times um, because I just thought solid job, solid paycheck. Um, I don't need to think. I'm getting told what to do. If I just work hard, then it's fine. It was like there was a tier structure and I could achieve it. You know, when I was at uni, what was I doing? I was so misdirected. I spent two years with the OTC. Some of the best and most challenging years of my life. I met, two, you know, some of my closest friends I met through um, the OTC. Pete, Chris, thanks for everything. Um, but great, great guys. And I'm really, but I, I'm so pleased I did it. But you know, I, I didn't then join the army and get a solid job. I've, I, there's, there's a lot of navigating. I, I think if I could go back to my younger self, it would still be a case of have an attitude of you don't know what's going on, but have a backup plan, you know, and, and, and not even not a backup plan in terms of throw art out the window and do something else, but have a job that pays the bills while you're still figuring things out and and you know and i'm man I'm, I'm still looking around thinking like is there a best use of my time that gets money coming in which mm -hmm. is um which is a decent enough job that's reliable while i can still paint before this because i i, I want this to take i want this to be full-time i really really do i i would love this to be full-time but there is a book mm -hmm. um that i would definitely recommend to anybody by the mm, way, uh, go. That chimes in on this one when you're getting a job. It encourages you to get a job in some kind of space or profession that helps you with your career somehow. So, for example, oh, I've oh, learned yeah. a lot at working in art supply shops or art galleries and places like that. Mm. 
because it helps you mm. get contacts. It helps you. Mm. You're in that world. Things. Yeah. And oh, that's um, a good point. So, I mean, yeah. that's a huge thing to be able to mm. get that kind of job. Um, yep. Yep. I was looking into that all the way up until the pandemic hit. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, good point. But that's it, isn't it? It's like you get knocked, you can spend all the time and effort looking into something and then get knocked for six. But it's that man, learning mental resilience. Um, that's a whole thing. That's a, that could be a whole separate topic. Um, yeah. And adapting and picking yourself up when the world is on its knees, not, yeah. not just you. It's a tough gig. Like it's, um, I really, you know, something that I've, I, you know, maybe I say this too often, but I would love our kind of viewers and listeners just to, for us to say, uh, you know, we're going through this mess as well, you know, like, and, and we could have had more stable jobs and certainly don't. Um, but we're doing the best that we can and we're keeping in contact with our loved ones and our, our those who are dear to us and we're trying to spur each other on despite the mess. Um, it is so easy to just fall into a pit of despair. I mean, put the neck, the, the mild existential crisis just before you go to bed. <laughs> who who am I? What am I doing? How on earth? Where's the money coming from? I hear it. I feel it. I'm going through it. It's, it I just any choose. Point, any point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Another thing that is very important is to find maybe people you know, but also mm. that there are artists out there and, and other people who can inspire you and help you find that love again, help you enjoy whatever it is again. Mm -hmm. My classic example, I love him to bits, Bob Ross. People laugh at it and it is a bit of a joke. But it's oh, not a hero. It's bad. It's never a joke mm. because he's not good. It's a joke because he's just so passionate and so so damn chilled out. <laughs> he made it. This is one of the reasons I would always encourage anybody listening to me about art, including any students I used to teach, to go and watch some Bob Ross because he will make you feel good about what you're doing. He helps you own the canvas. He keeps saying it all the way, all the way through. This is your world. It is your world. It is your damn piece of work. Own it. And he does it in such a chilled way. He helps, <laughs> he helps you enjoy cleaning your brush. That thing with the beat the devil out of the thing. That actually helps me. Like, it, it helps relieve stress. It helps get the paint off the brush quicker. Like, if, if any of you don't know. Practical. <laughs> it's yep. a metal pole. He's got, I've got a wooden table there, which I need to clean. Um, he just, when you're, Dipping your brush, I'll show you. So can I show you? Go for it. Take your brush. <laughs> Reenacting, boy, I love it. Beat the devil out of it. Beat the devil out of it. So good. It works great. Yep. They don't tell you that at university, that there's things you can do to help you enjoy mm. yourself more because they're just trying to teach you a subject. They're just trying to teach you this thing. It's not their fault. It's not mm. anyone's fault. It's a hard system everywhere you've got to find these things for yourself and mm. people like bob ross and, and things like that are classic examples of people who have found these wonderful ways to enjoy mm. craft or enjoy just simple little tasks yeah. just a little bit more yeah and that will help you hugely something um something i just thought of there when you were talking about that is uh again you know i'm like i I, I want to motivate people, but I 100% want to provide what actionable, practical advice that I practice myself that does actually work um, as often as I can. And something I have found it just helps so much is setting aside allocated time to do stuff. Now, a clean workstation, flip a neck, if you're fortunate to have a separate a whole space like you, that you can walk into where it's like this is where i do work this is where i eat this is where i sleep amazing that's a flipping luxury if all those things are the same space pull a curtain across set a timer put your phone on airplane mode and do some what i've heard called deep work it's like for the, and even if that's just 15 minutes you set a timer for 15 minutes the world doesn't exist. Whatever time, and, you know, I say this is students of, of any um, discipline, just set aside time. Work doesn't happen when you're inspired and when you're motivated. In fact, we could talk about motivation, maybe we have before, but 
It's, a, it's not about feeling good about doing something. It's about sitting down within an allocated time and showing up to work. And even if, you know, you, you'll get more productive work done in that time than you would if you suddenly felt inspired. It's like, it, it's consistency is key with literally everything in life. You show up to work, you show up to the gym, you show up, you know, choosing to eat or practice a certain anything. It's like in a couple of months time, you'll have, you'll be significantly up that bell curve than you would be anything else. I remember messaging um, uh, this guy online who does really good um, sort of gym videos and things. And I mm. remember his name. I think his Instagram yep. is SideQuest Fitness. And if you're out there watching this, which I doubt you will be, but thank you because you'll have been really helpful. Oh, I don't think I'm thinking back about it, but I messaged him saying, you know, I'm not motivated enough to go to the gym. I just don't feel it. He emailed me back, which I didn't expect at all. Um, saying that essentially motivation itself and mm. is really a thing it's more about willpower yes and he said to me so just show up to the gym don't yep. even do any exercise don't have the mentality of good, that you're going to do any exercise just show up to the gym just stand in the space for a bit and then go mm. on and, mm. and it's that kind of just show up yeah Put yourself up in up the time. place. Don't yeah. put yourself under the spotlight of I'm going to get this thing finished. Just show yeah. up. Yep. Yep. It's, you know, it's funny. I, I, I've, I've watched something. It was just a wee clip. There was a, um, I don't know if she's a bodybuilder or I can't remember her name, but um, the, the, the caption was normalize kids seeing like a gym environment. And at first it like the teacher in me was like, health and safety oh kids oh, p people shouting and screaming and swearing and like oh what of a dumbbell but you know this mum rocks up to the gym with her like five-year-old get some like dummy weights for her kid and she's doing like you know olympic um uh olympic movements for this thing and, and you know this five six seven year old is like copying mum i was like that's flipping brilliant you normalize that work environment. And again, we could say this for anything. It's like, and I appreciate this is, this is going out on a limb here, but it's, uh, it's like early on, normalize these work environments for what they are. These aren't showrooms where, you know, like there's so much stigma that comes with the gym and, and obviously like they're, they're really not a thing at the minute, but, but you can apply this to anything. So much stigma to just work itself. The best work gets done, just as you said, you show up, you, you become that behavior of showing up then becomes that behavior of starting to do something in that work environment becomes I'm now doing deep work in this work environment. And, and again, it's like, you know, we don't all have the luxury of a perfect workspace. I literally section off a part of my room as a studio space because it's what I have. Um, it's, I, I, yeah, I was going to say like the that's same with yourself. And cool and ease and set up, but it's yeah. So much yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. it. You, you just, this is the real, this is the real talk. It's like, One I, thing I will say though, that yeah, does shoot, go. is uh, the idea of a uniform. I mm. always hate it as a school mm. uniform. Thank you schools yeah. for making everybody yep. hate any kind yep. of uniform. However, mm. having ideal work clothes that are there for your specific thing definitely helps you get into a better oh. space. Let's totally go. agree. These are my painting clothes and they're comfortable and nice. There's a reason I wear this. You know, it mm. makes me feel better about the weather and mm. things like that because it's it's kind of it's just you don't wear a snap back inside in winter. Mm. What's the matter with you? But you do because it makes you feel good. Whatever makes you feel good, whatever yeah. helps you, you know. Yep. This wasn't always covered in paint, but it's become my painting hoodie, and I like it. And it helps you get into that. Gets into your head just as yep. much as ever having the right space the right clothes yep it's just crazy isn't it like we're just weird we are weird creatures like but, but you're right it's, you it's like I it sounds it. daft but it's so true it's like if i wake up and the night before i've left my gym clothes at the foot of my bed i'm gonna get straight into my gym clothes i'm gonna smith you know get to the get to the gym do a workout go for a run whatever and it's done if i hadn't set those things out I would have not tumbled over them and then just gone and, you know, had breakfast or whatever. But it's like set aside the tool. I mean, for me, whenever I start doing a fresh painting, you, you'll bet, you know, there's 
always a hot cup of coffee, pre-made, good to go. Like it's, um, you create the work environment that you want so that you're, you're, you're assisting yourself the best way possible. And we all, you know, we, we all live with, with different constraints and different limitations, but as we have talked about before, the best work and the best dedication comes within a limited space. It's like, you know, your parameters and you choose to accept them and then just work your arse off. Um, That's why I try and make sure it's for me anyway, I go with a four Mm. hour rule that you and I have talked about a bit Mm. before in that four hours solid Mm. creativity Mm. is roughly what your, your best timing your optimum time is four hours for most people mm. that can vary hugely obviously depending mm-hmm. on what you're working on yep. but i find that very helpful because it puts less pressure on myself mm. if i can say well i've got four hours of painting done four solid hours of painting done today that's great and it means that i've done it with the optimum mental and concentration mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i could yep um and that's fine for me. Yeah, block it in. Yeah. And then all the rest of the hours of the day, I can work on all the other business crap mm. that we talked about. That oh, we did. Yeah, yeah, of course. The things, yeah, the things that you don't know are more important than what you do know. Go figure out what you don't know, and then act on it. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, the business, the business side of things is, um, and you do. <laughs> so I. I've spent, I spent yesterday and uh, this morning just putting up posts, basically just saying like, please review my book. And, and it's, it's so horribly markety. It's like, Oh, look at me doing this thing. Uh, Please go do this for me. And it's, I was like, nobody's got time to do this. It's like, you'll have like 200 people view that story. Maybe one person will like act on it. Fair enough. People have busy lives. Why the heck should they? But if I don't ask, then that one person wouldn't have, you know? And if I don't ask again, then that other person wouldn't have. And then, you know, you have to kind of manage your expectations, all this kind of stuff that, like, the more, the more that I learn about, like, book marketing, the more I'm just like, how does anybody get a living out of this? It's just like, and it's because in the beginning, they don't. They keep working their side job. They keep putting food on the table. And then they do this in their free time. And it's hard work. Um, like but anything. yeah, like like anything. Yeah, precisely. It's um these pursuits are if if you're not I mean it is a relationship. It's like sometimes I just hate this stuff. It's just like what is the point? And then other times, like I said, it's like I just fall so back in love with it. It is a relationship. But nobody is gonna be pa- as passionate about your work as you are, which means that nobody is gonna market it like you are. It's then a case of where do I put this stuff so that it will resonate with the right people finding your target audience who then will want to invest, not just in, in your work and buy a product, but will invest in you because they believe in what you're doing and they want to see more of it. Um, but I mean, you know, and I, something that maybe we could kind of close on, I realize we're getting close to time, um, would be, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, yeah. Put with the work that you create, putting something that you know to be good back in the world. Um, and if you could tie that back to what you could tell your, your younger self, if you could but deal, do with that what you will, Baron. Give me, give me some parting advice. For my younger self or for just anyone? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, go, 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 yeah, there's a lot there. Yeah, there's a bit of misinformation going on there. Yeah, no, what, what would you... Um, yeah, what would you say to anybody who's along the lines of like, just like, how can you put good back into the world with what you have? Do not for one second think you are the best or the worst. Strive mm. to be better than you were yesterday. Strive for the you that you want to be. Anything else, everyone else, that's, it's not important. Now, I hate it when artists compare themselves to one another, and when critics compare one artist to another in a, in a ranking kind of way. It's just, it's just so stupid. It doesn't help you. And the best you are ever going to do is not give up, basically. 
I love that. That's, I hope that helps <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I, could, I couldn't have put it, but yeah. No, I, I need to say it to myself so. sometimes. So. Mm. Make sure your basic needs are covered in some way or form. Try and avoid crime. And, uh, but yeah, stay true to what you, you know you love doing. Yeah. And get it out there as well. You know, like it's, it's never, um, it's never too late and it's never too early. And I flip an egg. I wish I'd learned that to just get your work out there. You, you just, you never know who's going to see a spark in you and then just give you that little spark to keep going. Um, we can have all the plans in the world, but, but yeah, you're right. It's like, do with today what you can. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Just compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Push forward without beating yourself up. Yeah, we're all human. We're all still learning. Oh, I love it. That was class. Um, should we call it? Is there anything else you wanted to, wanted to cover? My hair's getting really long, Jonathan. Oh, man, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I trimmed the tash and then realized I had not had a haircut. I'm the only one to talk. This thing's a mess. <laughs> Lockdown yeah, locks, I'm, mate. I'm the haircuts, man. Yep. You said it. Ridiculous. You said it. But. Yeah. Ah, right. Love you, buddy. Stay strong, people. Um, what I will say as well, just before we go, uh, is if there's anybody else who would um, has got something that they want to say or share, please drop us a, a, a comment. I'm trying to get better at actually reading, <laughs> reading and engaging with those. So thanks for bearing with us. Um, uh, but yeah, if, if you want on the show or, or have something that, that you want to offer, please get in contact. Um, this has been Art Notes with myself, Jonathan Liddell. And Matt Barron. Matt Barron. Love All right. Time. Hope to see you again soon. Take care, folks. Thanks again. Uh.